In this video, we're going to go over the first step of duct design, your equipment selection window. To get to the equipment selection window, you can go to the Show menu, select Equipment, hit the F7 button on your keyboard, use the Equipment icon button on the toolbar at the top of the page, or the Equipment button here on the navigator bar. Note that if you have the right dollar tool, this will take you to our operating cost comparison page. Within that page, clicking the button with three dots will allow you to select several pieces of equipment for the purposes of comparison. The equipment that will be used in your duct design will be the one that you have selected at the top of the column here. For the purposes of this design, I'm simply going to use the show menu. Now for more information on the proper way to select a piece of equipment, check out some of our other videos dedicated to the equipment selection window. Our focus is going to be on the duct design components. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to select a split air source heat pump. This is going to allow me to see both the heating and the cooling side airflow values on one page so that I won't have to flip between a cooling system and a heating system. My backup will be electric strip and I'm going to eliminate water heating. That will take me directly to the split air source heat pump page or split ASHP. Now strictly speaking, for the purposes of a duct design, all I need to do is focus on this box right here. But there are a few other elements that we should consider. If you're using RiceOff to select your equipment using the Select Equipment option here in the bottom left hand corner, there might be some additional information provided about the airflow capabilities of your system. For example, if you're selecting equipment from one of the manufacturers that RiceOff has Manual S data for, and you choose the option that says Select for Manual S, the equipment available on the list will be sized at a particular air volume, meaning that the design CFM listed here, and therefore the design CFM listed on this page here, is going to be specifically calibrated to meet manual S requirements based on your load calculation and the manufacturer's extended performance data provided to Wrightsoft by that manufacturer. So if you've used Wrightsoft's manual S selection tool, the cooling and heating CFM numbers are more than just an estimate. These numbers are the CFM values, which will create the proper conditions for this particular piece of equipment to meet your load. In other words, in order to have the right amount of sensible and latent cooling from this heat pump, I'm going to need 1200 CFM moving through this system. Now unfortunately, at the time of this recording, none of the manufacturers who are providing their extended performance data are also providing static pressure data. So I'm going to be responsible for determining at what static pressure this fan can deliver 1200 CFM at the desired fan setting that I'm going to design for. If I choose not to select a piece of equipment using manual S data, if I simply hit the select equip button in the bottom left hand corner, find the equipment that I want to select, and click OK, the equipment data used is all based on AHRI data, which doesn't necessarily tell you the needed CFM to create the ideal operating conditions of that equipment. Bottom line, even if I have select equipment from Wrightsoft's equipment database, given that most of the data is AHRI data, if I'm not using the manual S features, I, the designer, am still responsible for providing this CFM information here. Prior to selecting a piece of equipment, the CFM is being calculated based on a manual S formula for estimating CFM. After your equipment is selected, given that it's based on AHRI data, Wrightsoft will automatically assume a 400 CFM per ton air volume. That is to say, your 95 degree capacity divided by 12,000 to determine nominal tonnage multiplied by 400. You can change this number by overriding the field here or by entering the CFM in this field here. If I choose to design this system for 1200 CFM rather than 1127, I simply need to change it here or with the F8 key on the keyboard here. And again, in this case, I'm still responsible for setting the static pressure value as well. Now you might find yourself designing a duct system prior to selecting a piece of equipment. Should you find yourself in a situation like this, you might use the Manual S's estimated CFM value here. Or if you have a general idea of the CFM you'll be moving through the system, but not the actual model numbers of the system yet, you're still going to need to visit this page to set your CFM values and your static pressure. If I know, for example, that I'm going to be moving 1,000 CFM through this system, I can override this field here or enter the information in this field here by using the F8 key 
and entering 1000 CFM. Now I'm still going to be responsible for, in this case, estimating the static pressure at which the fan that I'm going to choose will be able to deliver that 1000 CFM. At the end of the day, it's these two numbers. The CFM you'll be moving through your system and the static pressure conditions under which your fan can deliver that CFM that makes the equipment selection screen the first step of the duct design process. Now speaking of those CFM, we do have one other option here uh, that we can exercise. The default setting in RideSoft is to use a heating equals cooling design, meaning that your heating CFM will be based on your cooling CFM. Your heating static pressure will be based on your cooling static pressure. This is a common design tactic in a situation where your heating and cooling CFM may be variable, but your ability to seasonally balance a duct system is significantly hampered. Using a heating equals cooling design will ensure proportional design for any individual duct runs that might call for more heating or cooling CFM. If you want to adjust individual heating and cooling airflow needs, simply uncheck this box. You can then manually adjust both the heating and cooling CFM and static pressure numbers separately. This can be useful for situations where seasonal balancing is attainable and in situations where you want to base your design on one over the other. For the purposes of our videos here, we're going to use a heating equals cooling design option. There. Now once I click OK and move on to our next step, our static pressure losses page. This concludes our first step of the residential duct design process. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.